Welcome to the World Chess Championship 2014. Magnus Carlsen, defending world champion from Norway, rated 2863, highest rating ever in the history of chess. Looking to defend his title. Magnus won it last year from former world champion Vishyanan, seen here, ex world champion from India. Vishy's looking for revenge. It's going to be a great, great match. Stay tuned for the games. Hi, folks. John Cardisco back again. Round four of the World Chess Championship 2014 from Sochi, Russia. Magnus Carlsen is white, current world champion. Highest rated player ever in the history of chess. And Vichy Anand is black, former world champion. Now round three, Vichy drew blood. First time he beat Magnus in a championship game. He didn't beat him at all last championship, and this is the first time. Let's see how Magnus reacts to that, and let's see how Vichy reacts to his win. Magnus is white. Vichy is black. It's going to be a Sicilian. Good to see Vichy playing some sharper lines. He's played Sicilians his whole life. He knows it inside and out. Bishop, D, pawn takes, pawn takes, castles. Knight F6. Rick D1 check in D4, the computer's choices. Magnus picked D4. Bishop E7. Bishop E3. C takes. Now, Bishop takes, I think a lot of us would play, but that would, he would just lose the Bishop pair. Knight takes. That's a good square for that Knight, by the way. If you go to look at it, there's no pawns to harass the knight. Only a knight or a bishop can chase it off. Bishop g4. That was an interesting move. I think castles bishop g4 or h5. Those are the three choices for the computer. h5 I really don't understand. Bishop g4. Queen d3. And queen d7. This is pretty normal stuff. Isolated deep pawn for black to be sure. He's going to have to be careful. But if he plays it right, he might be able to get that as a passer. We'll have to see. Computer's got it about a third of a pawn advantage for white. Nothing unusual. White moves first. He'll have the small advantage. Now this might be a move I think Magnus did on his own. The computer likes knight c3 or a3. I like knight c3. He went knight d2. Now the computer didn't hate it. It just didn't like it. Um, tiny accuracy, maybe? I don't know. I'm I'm sure he's still in his prep. If I'm not mistaken, right around in here is where Magnus started taking a lot of time. And you're going to see later in the game, his time was really short at the end. Castles, of course. The other knight comes up. He wants that knight on the king side, obviously. Maybe that's why he went d2 instead of c3. Bishop just brings the rook over. Magnus brings his. Moves the bishop up. Now you, want, you want pointing, of course, towards the king side. But I think more than anything else, he wanted that open file. The only open file on the board. C3. In case he wants to move the other knight or the bishop, he's just reinforcing the knight already on d4, who's a really good knight, by the way. H6. Interesting here. Queen likes queen to c2, and Magnus went queen to f1. I was really, really surprised. Queen to c2 and knight to h4, I think, are reasonable. But he moved the queen back, and that was a little inaccurate, at least for the computer sense. Now, I, I, I know these are people playing, and this isn't fair to run a computer, even against Magnus Carlsen, but it is what it is. And you'll see at the end of this video, uh, they have the press conference. And Magnus talks about his play in this game in, uh, in round three where he lost. Bishop h5. Backs the bishop up. Knight e4 is liked by the computer. I kind of like that myself. A little aggressive. But Vichy didn't want to go too wild here. He did win game three. First time ever against Magnus in a championship game. So I think he was just trying looking to play solid. Bishop h5. H4. 
H3. Now that was a big surprise. Computer likes Bishop H3, Rook AC1, Knight H4. I like Bishop H3. Hits the queen. But he won H3. Who am I to second guess Magnus Carlsen? Bishop G6. Rook AD1. Just getting your rooks. Getting your rooks in the center of the board. Nothing unusual there. Apparently a minor piece is exchanged. Pawn takes. C4. Vichy slowly has a tiny advantage. And I mean tiny, a half a pawn. And that's what I think sometimes we miss when these guys say they play poorly or they played not as accurately. There isn't any blunders. But tiny, tiny inaccuracies that over time start to add up. And these guys can tell. We can, of course. I mean, unless you're using a strong computer. But but these guys see a lot more than we do. Bishop B4. Bishop B4 was a computer's choice. And Rook to E2. Just to annoy that Rook, I think. After Bishop B4, Bishop D4. And there was a couple of choices here. Rook to e6, queen f5. I like queen f5 because it's pretty aggressive. Or rook b8. We see what knight h7. Now, computer didn't like that very much. It was about a quarter pawn advantage for a black, and now it's pretty much the other way. Quarter or third of a pawn advantage. Is that a huge deal? No. He just wants to reroute the knight, I think. Maybe get him here. To go here or go to e6. C takes. Computer's torn between b takes and c takes. It likes c takes a little bit better. But Vichy played b takes. Now there's a half a pawn advantage for white. We're going back and forth here. Rook takes check. Rook takes. Queen d3. Now, what do you do in a position like this? How do you take advantage of, of these two isolated pawns? Can you do that yet, do you think? Or do you wait for the end game? Knight to f8, he's definitely going to reroute the knight either to g5 or e6. Or, excuse me, g6 or e6. Knight comes up. That stops the knight from coming to g6. Bishop. And that's the move, I think... Magnus said in the uh, press conference, which you can really tell he didn't want to be there at all. But it's part of the contract. they got to do it. So they do the best they can. I think he said he missed bishop e5. So he had, pretty much had a tank. Queen takes. Computer likes pawn takes a little bit better, but it's so tiny nobody cares. Queen takes. Bishop takes. Queen takes b3. Now this this position here is a lot more complicated than it looks, and it looks very drawish. You're going to see here in the next few moves. Queen f6, king. Rook d8, forcing the trade. Rook. Now, this is where Magnus didn't like it either. When he played rook takes rook and then pawn takes. What do you do? What do you do? He wanted rook c1. Rook e1. One of the two, I think, was better. He decided to trade. Because at this point, he was getting really low on time. We're on move 31. If I recall correctly, the last four moves, moves 36 to 40, Magnus had less than one minute or about a minute left. He was under a little bit of pressure. So I think he was trying to just trade down to get a position where he just couldn't blunder in the time problem. Knight d5, that's a really good spot for that knight. Right now the computer shows dead even. And when I say dead even, I mean 0, 0.00. Queen f5. Knight d3. That's a good spot for that knight. But the problem is that the queen's got to babysit it. Knight d4 and g4. 
Jupiter likes queen to d1, frankly. Magnus was trying to push the queen. Queen to d7. Queen to b5. And this is where Magnus was incredible time pressure. If you went knight e6, that's a really good spot for that knight. Uh, eventually, if you have to, push the pawn here. This queen's guarding the other isolated pawn, so... Whoops! Got a little carried away with my arrows there. There we go. Now, there's only about a minute left for Carlson here. And we're move 36. And he goes king to g3. And I think he was just trying to get to the time control. Queen to b5 by Vichy. Vegas goes knight to f4. Now it's it's tripling up on the pawn, but I think what he wanted to do was try to simplify it down a little bit in the time trouble. He had a minute to make about four moves. Knight takes, king takes, doesn't take any time at all. So that's two moves there. Queen checks. He moves the king to f3. D4 by Vichy. The bag just goes queen e8, queen e8 check, and that's the 40th move. So he got through the time control. Barely, but he made it. I think the quality of moves weren't that great. Now, Magnus very rarely gets in time trouble. Very rarely. Kind of like Nakamura in a way. They very rarely get in time trouble. I think that's a testament to Vichy during the course of the opening and middle game. That Magnus had to use a lot of time. That Vichy straight out of known theory in a lot of positions these guys are familiar with. So I'll, I'll, I'll give a tip of the hat to Vichy on that one. King 8, 7. Now... Here we are. He's got an extra hour. This is typical Magnus now. Take a basically an even position. The computer shows it about a quarter point advantage for white. Take an even position and just grind them down. Now, look at the two isolated pawns for black, the D and the A pawns. Can he do anything with that? No, I don't think so. But it's one of those deals where if you believe that the only two options in the game are you either draw or you win, you continue on. Queen takes... Queen to d2, great move. Queen f5 check, king h8, h4. Trying to get some tricks in. He's trying to get pawn here. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Say queen takes. Queen checks. King comes up. Pawn here. Pawn's going to end up here for white. Try to develop a mating net to trick him. But with this, with queen of d7, it covers that g5 square. So Vichy's okay. So he just takes queen e6, queen of d2. Just as long as he covers the g5 square, he's okay. And it's drawn. Queen e8, king, queen, king, queen, king. And they agreed on a draw. I think it was a good game of both their parts. Now, you'll see at the end here with the press conference, Magnus said he played horrible the last two games. And we all know game three, game prior to this, Magnus lost. And Vichy played a great game. I'll give him that. So, we'll see. Uh, I really didn't see on the computer that it was that horrible for Magnus. I mean, he didn't play to his top potential of his skill level, but I don't think it was anything that bad either. But I think he was just upset about yesterday's game. And I think he was really going to come out and go after Vichy this time, and it just didn't work out. So anyway, tomorrow, Thursday is a rest day, so Friday they'll begin round five. So that's it for round four of the Real Chess Championship 2014. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank all my new subscribers. Got quite a few in the last few months. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And as I always say... If you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Okay, start. Dear chess fans, welcome to the press conference. We have the fourth game ended in a draw. So please uh, tell us what happened in this game. Yeah, I didn't think I, I had this. Too much. Uh, oops. Thought I was perhaps a little bit better. Uh, then here I was. Yes. 
so the miss it's good to be five and then there's nothing there. Could perhaps try to put the bishop on c3 instead and if knight is a six then I can go knight h4. Uh, but if knight g6 then I, I think it's very hard to achieve anything at all. So yeah, black pieces are doing fine. Yeah, af after that I started to drift a bit. Uh, this was still fine. Queen e2 was very lazy. I should just go queen c2 instead and force him to exchange rooks, after which it's obviously a draw, but at least I can claim to be uh, symbolically better. But uh, this was uh, really stupid. Here I was still seeing if I could achieve a little bit, uh, but I, I missed the idea of if I go knight c6 then just knight f4 and queen g6 and it's nothing. Yeah, um, uh, after queen d7 I was a little bit worried that I might be worse, but at least after queen b5, knight f4. White is maybe at D4. least not losing. Yeah, maybe d4 is, is the best one. It's not queen e4, probably. Yeah. This should still be fine. Yeah. Uh, Vishu, what is your version of what, what happened in this game, and uh, how did you estimate the position after the opening? Um, well, it's a typical Islani. Um, black uh, uses the squares and activity to compensate for the Islani. And um, uh, more or less the same. Uh, I had the feeling uh, he had missed knight six when he went for knight e5. And then here, um, yeah, for some reason I thought queen b5, I could still uh, do something. But <coughs> d4 is better because it, then it stops this knight moving, I think. But still, after something like queen e4, he's so centralized, I can't believe that um, it's really going to be something. But it's it's easier to blunder with white, probably, because the king is the f4 square, and you know, it, it just. Um, and of course, um, here something sensible would have been nice. I simply missed that um, queen c3 check, king e4. I thought d3 was an easy draw, but uh, he has queen f3. And then I'm probably, well, at least much worse. But queen d2 seemed to hold, because um, uh, the point is, uh, when after I play d3, at some moment if he, um, I mean, okay, let's make some more random moves. Um, king e4, uh, d3, queen f5, king d4 or something, I can take, because he cannot protect both pawns. So with queen d2, I think I'm saving the game. Queen f5, king h8. And this was a very nice try because white's trying to play g5 and mate. Um, I wanted to do this, but then suddenly, um, was it g5? Mm. Is he remember? Ah, yeah. Uh, he goes here, then he goes here. No, but I guess I can just play yeah, g5, yeah. yeah. No, even this is not really yeah, working. But, no, but queen d2, I thought, was very precise. Yeah, queen d2 is nice and then. Because I, I control the g5 square, stopping g5, and I'm threatening d3, and I think it's safe. Yeah. So were there any other particular moment in the game, uh, Vishu, that you were afraid about your position, or you didn't like it, or something like this? And same for Magnus. Was there any moment you disliked your position? There wasn't really a moment I was worried about. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is a very complex position, so I was trying hard to get get to grips with it and understand it. But uh, I wasn't. There wasn't a moment I was very concerned. Obviously, except at this one, when I went, uh, I went d4, and, th and then as soon as I played d4, I saw that he has king queen f3. But um, um, by then, I'd al also seen queen d2 very quickly. So. Uh, there was uh, 19th move, c4, uh, when white played c4, and uh, some people considered that you might play here more actively, like bishop b4 or queen b7. Um, did you consider these kind of uh, variations? 
Yes, but I didn't see what they were leading up to because anyway he's going to swap rooks by moving his bishop. And um, I mean, if there's a point I missed, you should tell me because I. I no, no, I just, just thought, uh, there uh, were different plans and. Uh, yes, but uh, I mean, you. I didn't see any particular advantage to provoking b3 or provoking something else in mm -hmm. bishop b4 rook e2. I didn't see the point either. Uh, mm -hmm. I, whereas I actually thought what I need is the bishop coming to d5 and the knight going to h7 so that it can come to g5 later mm -hmm. or maybe f8. You know, it can reroute itself nicely. Um, so do we have questions about the game or some other questions? Yes. Uh, microphone. Microphone. Um, Magnus, were you disturbed by anything in the start of the game? Disturbed by the audience or something? Mm, I mean, there, w there was a bit of muttering, but I, I, yeah, I didn't uh, care too much. No. Вчерашняя партия, такая партия была у Томашевского, знал ли Магнус эту партию, изучал ли, или плоды домашней подготовки были к другому разветвлению, но пусть задать насчет Томашевского. The question is for Magnus. The yesterday there was a game of Tomaszewski played in в этом в этом же варианте. Да, в этом же варианте. In the same variation. So did you check this game? Yes. Did you have time to check it? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, um, I'll w worry about my own games and then Tomaszewski can worry about this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, then the question comes also to the players. Uh, yesterday, the Petrosan Memorial just finished. Did you follow this tournament and what can you say about the results of this event? Oh. Uh, it was an impressive win by Grishuk. Played very interesting chess and scored quite a lot of points. So something to be remembered. Yeah, basically, I think what stood out for me was Grishuk's performance. Um, Vladi also played well, but uh, I mean, Grishuk really sort of underlined. Uh, well, he, <coughs> he won very convincing. And tomorrow, all these p participants will come here and uh, will play in Tal Memorial, which starts tomorrow, going to be concentrated on your preparation. I guess both. Uh, I'll try to follow it, but um, I don't know uh, if it will be possible to you know, leave our prep and just go there and watch the whole time. So. Yeah, it will be very near <laughs> to the playing hall. Uh, Magnus, what about you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't thought about it. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, to both players, how happy are you with your play today? Well, it was a difficult uh, game because uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on based on this d5 pawn and um, I was pretty content except for this one uh, brief moment with d4, but um, I never really got worried because I, at the same moment I saw why queen c3 didn't work, I, I saw that I could go one square further, so after the time control um, I had a chance to check everything, and as far as I could see, that worked out. Um, otherwise, uh, just a reasonable game, I thought. Magnus, what about you? Mm, I thought I played terribly, but there was there was a draw, so that's okay. Uh, and also, you got into you had to make three moves in about a minute. There, uh, did that stress you out, Magnus? Mm, well, at, at that point, the position had kind of clarified. I got this knight of four. And then there was not too much danger, uh, so I was not too too worried. But I guess at some point I'll have to start playing a bit faster. Minus, uh, how was the evaluation of uh, yesterday's game? Mm, I mean, mm, well, I can only repeat what I said yesterday. You played very well. Uh, I made several poor choices and was deserved win. And with that game in mind, how do you see the one on Friday? 
Hmm. Well, it's more difficult playing black than playing white, but I'll have some time to prepare and, um, and be ready. What's the biggest difference from uh, Chennai last year to this match? Okay, it was the last question, okay? <laughs> from you, I mean. Uh, I think uh, in Chennai the score was 2 2 after four games. Here it's 2 2, so I, s I don't see any difference. Вопрос к обоим участникам. Мемориал дали по облицу. Завтра и послезавтра играется, в общем, свободное от вашей игры время. Этот вопрос уже задавался на английском языке. Я уже его перевела. Я еще не Хорошо. И с хорошим призовым фондом. Кто-то из вас не думал сыграть в этом турнире? Okay, and the question is for the both players. Uh, the, the prize fund of Tal Memorial will be really impressive. It's one hundred thousand uh, dollars. Were you considering the the idea to play to participate in this event? Um, well, uh, very briefly. Uh, um, I think we concluded that I, I would have to miss three rounds. Uh, well, basically, basically no. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, it would be fun if uh, one. Oh, well, it's over. Uh, it's over a couple of games as well. It's not only on the rest day. So. Um, Anand, obviously, you are the challenger in this match, and you made made a nice comeback yesterday. Who would you say had, has the psychological advantage in the in the match right now? Um, I I don't know. I simply have no idea. Um, yeah, I mean, my thoughts are more as to what I will play and uh, stuff like that. Um, I think the, this kind of reflecting you do later. What about you, Magnus? Mm, I don't know. It's. Um, yeah, I guess think about it later. Um, regardless of what mood you are in, uh, the score is still the most important. So since the score is equal, then so far everything is equal. What is your confidence like right now? Mm, I'm, I'm not playing. Well, my, my last two games have been pretty bad, so I have to improve. But I, I think uh, I, I can still play, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Oh, please. Uh, question for both of you. How will you use the rest day? It's pretty similar to last time. Um, <laughs> work a bit and uh, also try and get some rest. Mm -hmm. I if I heard you correctly, you said my last two games were pretty bad. So did you miss something very obvious today as well? Um, n well, I missed several things, but I think um, overall, um, yeah, it was just not a very high quality game. I think overall it was just not a high, very high quality game on my part. I mean, there were no glaring blunders. At least I don't think so. But just uh, in general, uh, not good enough. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for.